Oh, uh, meaning the order? Yes. Yeah. First yeah. item on the agenda is acceptance of minutes um, from the September 9th meeting. We have a. Thank you. I'll second that. Thank you. And all in favor? Dr. Bougie, are you there? Yes, I'm in favor. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dr. Bougie. Hi, Dr. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, and the next item on the agenda is product status, project status. So, Andrew, you want to? Yeah, um, well, Darren's been there doing a bunch of stuff. Um, I know you guys are anxious on this insurance report. Uh, Eric Duby is back tomorrow. We checked him with his office this morning, so we'll contact him. Paul's a little hesitant. I know we wanted to try and get ahead of it, but he thinks it might be a little bit difficult to assess their assessment uh, without receiving it. And so um, I think you had told him that the guy had taken a bunch of pictures of things. And so we would um, want information or it would be better to be more informed about what they were looking at specifically. Paul says it could range from anything, you know, if, if they said one brick is out of place or something and that's structurally unstable, we can replace that brick versus like if they somehow considered, I don't know, want the granite lintels to not have sufficient support and they're ready to collapse kind of thing. That's something else we'd have to address. So I guess, I mean, have you, has anybody called or talked to anyone from that uh, inspector's office, heard anything from them at all? I haven't. No, I think that from what Justin said, that the report would probably show up in, you know, another week maybe, because it's been one week. So I think it'll be perhaps another week before they end up with it. But I can find out if there's any pictures or anything yet i can um text him tomorrow and find out yeah it would be good to know um you know what they're looking at because the last thing we want to do is have eric db drive up there assess the building spend a couple hours writing a report and we give it to them and it turns out all they really needed was x and then you know eric charges you guys for eight hours of his time and whatnot on on that I, and i don't know you know eric is uh he was a little flabbergasted by the fact that he that it was determined that the building was unstable because he he took offense to that as a professional uh you know engineer that he would not be working on or approving a project that was unstable and so maybe he's, he does it you know as a proof to you guys thing or something i don't know how that'll all shake out but um I, yeah i guess Paul's a little hesitant to pull the trigger on on having Eric like gear up for something if we're not quite sure what they're looking at. Would it make sense to send them that original structural report? Um, receive their report or not? Yes, if if one was done, I mean to the extent of if, if they had done like a written and signed and, you know, pictures taken and drawings done structural report versus like determining in the field, what they would need to address in drawings. And then there's sort of information that they have in their heads that they're putting into their structural design. I'm not sure. Uh, we're going to talk to Eric tomorrow. Oh, okay. And, All and right. see Perfect. what's happened so far. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's been to the site multiple times and, yeah. you know, none of those times was he like, this needs to be done or the building collapses. And the one thing that, that was, you know, taking, taking those trusses and reinforcing them from below on the roof, it was the biggest structural uh, change, I guess, uh, or reinforcement that was done. And the rest of it is load bearing brick walls that, I mean, yes, there is a, a bow in the back, um, but that doesn't seem alarming. Didn't seem alarming to Paul. Doesn't seem alarming to Eric based on previous conversations. We're, we're not entirely sure yet. So we'll speak to him tomorrow. Okay. I'll probably send out an email or Paul will send out an email um, on, on what we talk about to everybody. Um, as far as other project status things, I, I think we're just letting Darren keep going um 
that bell must be just about ready to go up. Well, that's what I had the question on that because I emailed um, Jonathan Taggart and he wanted to know if there was a date, but he, from the sounds of it, he didn't specify, but it sounds like he's just working on the wheel and he needs a couple more weeks on the wheel um, if he puts it to the front of the line. So I think that I am inclined to ask him to do that. Right. <laughs> so we get it back here. So if Nickerson and O'Day gets the work done up at their shop and then comes down with the tower ready to go, that we've got the bell in Monmouth. In the Absolutely. Wheel in Monmouth. And, and I would make that somewhat of a priority. You know, if it's going to take them a couple of weeks, we're already in going into the second week of October. Mm -hmm. We don't, they don't, we don't want them doing that, you know, snow. God, yeah. God forbid any snow, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. but it could come yeah. around, you know, Thanksgiving. We've had snowy Thanksgivings before. So. Yeah, right. Okay. I will tell him that we, to please put it in the front of the line and yeah. get it back as it's soon close. as possible. Yeah. yeah. Cause he's, I think we're going on took it mid-August, like the 15th, so. Yeah, yeah creeping up on two months. Yeah, so, perfect. Yeah, okay. yep. Um, another project status thing is we met with baby and oil. Get an idea of how we can keep the property considered in condition. Oh, no, fall the <laughs> There, I had it right on top. Um, yes, Fabian. Yeah. 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 Since the quote that I received back from Fabian, uh, materials would be what we looked at was maintaining you know, between 40 and 50 degrees um, would probably be two by the looks of that, two um, of these knives. Um, get with the their EX 38 DTs, their direct, the direct, direct vent wall furnace. And we talked about putting one in the 1914 area and then one in the um, auditorium area on the back wall, midway. And so the materials would be 5678, labor 1488, so a total of 7166. And they want um, 1791 down. Um, he's thinking, he thought about a couple of different options, but because we're not trying to maintain a 70 degree, you know, and there wouldn't be much going on this winter, it's just to keep it above freezing, um, going with the two units seemed to be the most economical option. Are these permanent? Yeah, are they permanent? No, they're, they're, they're temporary. just temporary. Yeah, yeah. Because they're, they're our, our goal would have been to put in one of the systems or one or two of the systems mm -hmm. up, upstairs, but we just, you know, we can't do that right now. With when I talked to Steve Berg about that, he said that would be a lot more cost expensive to put the permanent units in. Yeah. Because you had to have ductwork and other things. And these would be just build a little stand in front of the window, uh, put a panel in, mm -hmm. you know, raise the window up a short distance, put a panel in there and, and direct vent been. them through there. Right. And then these would be there until the time comes that we, we put in the, raise enough money to complete the rest of the project. So right. it's not wall mounted. No, no, they're sitting. No. Okay. They'd be in front okay. of two windows. Okay. It's only because it says essentially wall. look like if you've ever oh, seen okay. a K one heater yeah, or yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So yeah. That's, yeah. that's basically what they're only they're propane. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay, they are. He is doing um, thermostats, external thermostats on both because if you just turn them on low. It would run constantly mm -hmm. yeah. um, with the thermostat. Mm -hmm. We could get them to shut, shut off when it off. reaches yeah. that. Right, exactly. Okay. So. And this, what we asked him for was a complete package that includes setting the tanks, all the piping, yeah. everything, complete turnkey. All we have to do is provide power, 
in the right location so they could plug in one ten. Yeah. Or did the tank sit on a outside on a um on a pad on a pad? Yeah. Okay. He he was talking about at the time we talked to him. He didn't specify. He thought two, maybe three of the hundred and twenty gallon yeah. round yeah. tanks yeah. would yeah. be sufficient to keep up with this. Ultimately, more than likely, we would go with a you know maybe a thousand pound or gallon or whatever that yeah. You know, Potentially, when we switch over to the permanent system, we could put a thousand gallon tank out there, and that would just decrease the amount of times they need to come fill it. Right. Yeah. And right. Just extend the time. Right. But this this would be easier now because we can set these tanks right next to the building. We don't have to do any digging to run a line or have to build a right. gravel pad. He said they can. They put some crushed stone down. They have their right. little fiberglass pads that the tanks sit on. They they handle the whole thing. They can enter the building where we were thinking is that yeah. hole that's <laughs> awkwardly there. Yeah. 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 And and then these are things that people use in camps all the time. Yeah, so, so they're very yeah, sick that if we start, turn around mm -hmm. when the permanent system's there, be able to exactly. sell them and right. Mm -hmm. Which is I think really that I think that, you know. If this works for Steve Burton and all of that. And and we, yeah, this kind of it was his suggestion. Yeah. We we talked about he thought it was going to be around twenty five to thirty grand to put the permanent yeah. two of the permanent right. units in. Yeah. But then you still had to run because you had to run duct work off of those to get the heat to the proper so areas and stuff. Yeah, so you have to so, run the duct work yeah, to get it where exactly to get the heat where it needs to be. And we so, just you know not ready at the moment. Yeah. yeah. So I think yeah, it's definitely. So we feel good about this sending this. So we should send it to Steve. I, I think so. Yeah. 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 Send it to Steve, see what he thinks. But I I can't imagine we would want to do anything else right. personally. No. Do you want to vote on it now so that it, sure. if Burton, yeah. Steve Burton's fine with it, then we, yeah, we might go, so we just go with that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we have a motion to um, forward well, this. I'd make the motion that we accept this price. And I'll, proceed with that. I'll second it. You and all in favor? I vote yes. That's only Larry. That takes an extra step out of it. We don't have to go back. Absolutely. To it. Oh, no, no. Great. If Steve Burton's yeah. fine, you can just have Justin sign it and yeah. go forward. Yeah. Cool. Does JD say before? Yeah. Um, Megan got evacuated. Yeah. Back on the 24th. He was gonna stay, but he can't. Yeah. So, well, he, the bank is staying open today in Toronto at least before it became a cat five. Yeah. Well, it's a five now. now it's yeah. A, um, it'll drop obviously, but yeah. but still, it's um. So he's trying to decide tonight if you know it's, he's in Fort Myers. So it would whichever yeah. way he goes, yeah. it's yeah. it's yeah. going across. The and so Meg's at Eckerd. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. At St. Petersburg. Okay. So she was evacuated first to Tampa. Oh, yeah. And oh, then is... Leanne brought her home on the 24th of September. Oh, because yeah. they had to get out. Oh, dear. Yeah. It's a little nerve wracking. Yeah, but... to Josh yeah, and Eckerd. Just a little bit. Like there was a mother that took in like 10 kids from the baseball team because Josh had just gotten down there. It was like his first week of school oh. and they closed everything and Josh didn't know where to go. Yeah. <laughs> the cold winter doesn't sound so bad now, does it? <laughs> I know. Nothing really exciting happens here except a little bit of rain, exactly. some snow, exactly. have some trees come down. Yeah. All right. Um, the other thing is I texted the kid from uh, Fournier's Tree Service and oh. I haven't heard anything back, but, you know, we'll see what happens. He usually responds after a couple of days because I'm sure they get go through a ton of texts. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. I'll get an answer on that about the trees. So that would be that would be awesome. Um did we ever get a clarification if those are our trees or panel's trees? Well, I I I mean I don't know that I ever actually had that specific I mean, that's, conversation. That's a but our budget I, know, I don't work so that I can have that discussion again. I I don't believe I did ever have that right, particular conversation. Just not on the property. Yeah, if it's yeah, 
Yeah, it's still town the, property. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. I'll, yeah. That is true. Let me make a note to I'll put it up because if it can like to conserve our budget if yeah, we exactly. can. Yeah, exactly. I know. Exactly. You know. Absolutely. It's a it's a necessity. Yes. Yeah. And is, that, is that going to include that dying sugar maple that obstructs the view of the tower? Yeah, the one. Oh uh, well, I I mean, if they're there doing stuff, I'd assume we'd ask them to do that too. But I think for the biggest part, the oh. maple's not the issue as much as, as, as much as the pines are. So, um, and the other thing Darren mentioned to us the other day were that clump of lilacs. But before we did anything, I think there's two big clumps. Yeah. There's one closer to the porch, mm -hmm. and it's what caused all that rot on that mm -hmm. pillar. Yeah. Um, and Darren said, if something was gonna go get rid of that clump, but the other smaller clump that's more towards the actual brick of the building, mm -hmm. not where right. the, not wood the wood por porch is. Yeah. Yeah. And if we trimmed that and left that clump, so. All the years of planting the ivy, the oh, senior well, class will plant the after grow up. <laughs> It's like, hmm, what thought of that? That's not a good idea. Exactly. <laughs> but the like we'd at least be able to keep one clump. But I think, you know, if um, you know, at some point Jim Jimmy's backhoe is gone, but um at some point if we can have somebody twitch those lilacs out away from the porch, that will go a long way and then eventually put gutters. Right. But mm -hmm. So those are the only things that I had to follow up on, but I'll I'll talk to Justin about the tree removal and find out again or a who <laughs> 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 comes yeah. first. Yes. Right. Yeah. So okay. So as far as project status, we're just chugging along, and Darren was he did take some of the wood that was a part of the dome. And he's going to put those together and make them like where you can put photos of the renovations that are being done or whatever we want to put on them, which would be really nice. Yeah, it'd be nice to repurpose that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else? It was a busy week. It was. Did they ever get back to you on cost of installation? Didn't they come up and look at that and assess that? They were going to give you a cost to, to insulate the inside. No, insulation is figured in the. It's already figured. figured. That should be in the part of the yeah, original what, price. Okay. What the cool. Fabian did was come in and, and then I sent them the drawing so that they could use the um, square foot oh, okay. area, of, you know, dimensions mm -hmm. and whatnot to see what they needed to maintain the BTU okay. load. Steve and, Burton did recommend that he he said he had to have them re evaluate the quote to make sure it was still good because it's been quite a while. Right. It's yeah. Been old, yeah. You know, most of them. Aren't holding their prices for too long. Right. It's not. It's not cheap, especially the rock wool. It's not cheap, but yeah. it's a good product. Nice when you need it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, very good for bricks too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I was talking with a fellow, and I don't know who I shared this with. But I was talking with um, a fellow that that's his forte is building envelope, and he said if we do put the rock wool. Um, to push it right up against the brick, which is what we were talking about, mm -hmm. to be able to run our electrical lines and whatever else. But he said that should that should help. And we would be able to tell this year <clears throat> by pulling it away, by keeping it, you know, um, conditioned, keep the space conditioned and see if any moisture collects, because that's the concern is the condensation, freezing and, and thawing of any condensation that would be in a potential cavity. Which of course if you didn't have a cavity before you had the stuff right on the brick, right? So. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay. Um, I'll start with project update then. Uh, project status. Um, fundraising. Well, I'll give good news. Yes. So um, Jane Rio, I spoke with her at um, Apple Fest, and she was here from where she lives in Portugal and works for the Navy. And um, she was really interested. And I guess she, um, at one point in her career, was a librarian or did something with libraries. So she came and left me, um, gave me a check for $2,000 for the other door going into the library. Mm -hmm. 
and it's in honor of um, Gerard, Dolores, and Pat. Mm -hmm. And of course, after she left, it was a bank check. So I'm like, I don't have her address. And I don't even know where her real last name is if she's, you know, because I know she's married. She was with her husband. But I'll find all that stuff out because <laughs> I know where to find the Rio. So I'll um, find that out. And then um, Rudy Johnson had worked with and talked with Penny Johnson Bornstein again. And she gave, um, sent a check for $4,000 for an exterior door. And it's you know, and she wasn't going to do it in anybody's honor, but Rudy talked to her about her uncle, Bertha's brother, who was killed in World War II. Oh, and she did it. She did a she window, which made her father, yeah, exactly. Bertha, and, Bertha and Wes. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, um, wow. So within two days, I collected $6,000. I was pretty happy That's about awesome. that. Wow. <laughs> but Very then... Awesome. At Apple Fest, I sold three throws and took in seventy-five dollars worth of donations. So that was like two hundred and what did I tell you? Two eighty-five uh, or two ninety-five? Two ninety-four. Like two. So anyway, I um I had um a good little week's worth of activity there. So Face up. I, yeah, I know. I know. That's so what I told Dawn. I said, I just want somebody to write me a check for five hundred thousand dollars right. or at least give me an insurance policy or something. <laughs> you know? Somehow, some way. So our total right now of just the fundraising is eighty eight thousand two hundred and ninety four dollars. So um I'm almost tempted to, you know, go make somebody else give me two thousand dollars so I break the nine hundred. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. What do we have left? Of windows. The only the back windows, um, the six fifteen hundred dollar windows are still available. Okay. And then another exterior door for four thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. So exterior door. Yep. And then six fifteen hundred dollar windows. Um. The other thing I wanted to talk about is um, we talked before, I mentioned before about doing a um, show with um, Gary Crocker. And I asked Dennis if he would be MC and do a little shtick too with that. And he was open to that. But of course, we can pick a date. But I mean, there we had our meeting for Cumston Hall and they're pretty booked up until Christmas and then it gets crazy. So I was thinking that if there was something like March or March time, when mm -hmm. people want to get out and go do something on a Friday night, that maybe if we can find then, and then I'll have my sidekick is moving back home. Darlene's coming home. So I'm going to make Darlene help me with this because she and Nancy orchestrated so many things and did so many projects together with the community heating program. Um, I wanted, you know, another hand in all of it. So if you, I know that one point Larry Brenner talked about donating something. So if we think about things that we could also do maybe auctions for, mm -hmm. or people could bid on and we could have you know, the throws there. And if we had people donate things that people could do a silent auction for as part of that night, you know, and have make money that way, not only for the show, because Gary Crocker said he'd do it for nothing for us. But if we think about that part and then it's something that we've got some time to work on well and also together. rudy johnson had spoken with gary yes and gary is um very um he's uh, connected to angus, angus king, king yes and so doing that matching you know if we got the match earmarks yeah i think that's on the docket yeah. i think those things don't open until the new year yeah. right yeah so but yep. you know, who knows? Yeah, the matching funds for the yeah. state fund. The, the state right. funds, but the bill passes. Yes. Um, is he, he didn't think it would be ready for, till March. Yeah. Right. Right. And then, you know, federal earmarks through Angus or Susan Collins yeah. and those things. That would be great. Those would be great too. But and those don't open again until the new year because they're all done. We'd be it would be like into 2020. 
Well, five they, or six, right? Feds are on October. Feds. Oh, are they? Yeah. So they're in the new year already. Yes. So. So. I'll have to just check with him. Yeah. To see what's going. On. Exactly. So because I think he's already planted a bug in Angus's ear about yeah. that for us. Um, and if we can. I'll look at it. Look at that, because that's another whole can of worms, because then you have to document that moving forward, right? There's a lot of <laughs> paperwork. <laughs> Anything to do with feds. Is <laughs> yeah, a lot of paperwork. So um, so I think that I'll talk to Dennis about what weekends might be open um, and I'm sure Friday night's better for all most people than a Saturday night. I mean, do you think Friday night show is better attended than a Saturday night I show? I think Friday night shows are because you're still in the mode of your work week. And sometimes, you know, people tend to go away. Yeah. And it's like Saturday morning, we're going to leave. We're going to go away for the week, rest of the weekend. Oh, it's yeah. up the whole weekend. You know, yeah. and so I think Friday night, you've still got Friday night, and you know. So. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I was thinking, and I'll see what Dennis has available because I know you know he'll already know what's you know, happening. Happening, and Easter's way into April this year because I looked at that for something else, and um, so I think if maybe Marches, March ish, March ish, March ish, March ish, <laughs> something in March. And um, it's five. And you know, then also it comes to in, we could see if um, because they do um, you know beer and wine service there. If, mm -hmm. if uh, Dennis was talking about a new way he was going to do that, because some shows people, lots of people drink, and some shows oh, other people don't, and so. They were, Dennis was trying something new at his next show. But anyway, I at least see if Grateful Grains wanted to be a part of that since right. they're Monmouth people and say, would you mm -hmm. want to donate this and or part of the proceeds, proceeds go to the show? Yeah. And if we wanted to have, you know, right. snacks or whatever, or, you know, I don't know how involved we want to get it, whether or not we right. wanted to have something down there and have, you know, make crock pots of chili and somebody could have a thing of chili and that would be us that made it. So it'd be, you know, money as well. So I don't know. We can talk about that as we get closer, whether that makes sense or not or not. Well, whatever, <laughs> you know, <laughs> something easy that people can yeah. spoon into their mouth easily. So basically but, a potluck for Yeah, and then it would be, so whether or not that would be something we'd want to do too, as part of it. Those are the ideas that I had, and I'm sure that when my sidekick Darlene gets here, she'll <laughs> have some ideas of what they've done before too, so... When we, when you find out the date, mm -hmm. let me know because I would, um, I will help out with uh, the auction items yeah. of reaching out to like Red Sox, Celtics for the silent auction items. Uh, a lot of times they will provide like uh, signed baseballs uh, or like tickets to like a game, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, that would be great. Or like awesome. a jersey. Um, and then also there's a ton of other places. Yeah. Um, of getting like, mm, uh, gosh, there's a ton of places with all the fundraisers that with helping out with uh, people being sick and things like that. Right. I will ask Melanie and <laughs> she does, you know, there's a lions and I will, I will that would be rely fun. on them to give me the ideas of who they reach out to. Does everybody know Donna? No. This is Donna Grant Pease. Oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So she was a year behind me in school. Oh, okay. And, um, yeah. So she, I've seen you around, but I, I yeah. know you. 
She was here pulling for us at the select board meetings. Yes, <laughs> with the us. Prescott's and near and dear yeah. to Monmouth. So yes. Yeah. Um, and lived in Monmouth on my left as well. So yeah. It's a the school is very near and dear. Much appreciated. Yeah. yeah. I'm Laurie Fairchild Gifford. So Monmouth is very near and dear. As <laughs> daddy <laughs> being in that building for yeah. all those years. So, Steve, so. You know Steve Brown. Steve Brown. I don't think so, no. So Steve Brown is I'm a newbie. I've only well, been in I know, years. but Steve Brown <laughs> has been been in. So wow. he, Steve was married to Charlie the Vat. Uh -huh. And um, so, but they live up on the ridge yeah. and now they keep having more and more browns. So now there's oh, heard about <laughs> multiplying up on your road yeah. last night looking for the uh, northern lights, by the oh, way. Yeah. So if, if you saw two vehicles, it was my sister and I, Diana was in her truck and <laughs> Melanie and I, and the girls were in mine mm -hmm. because we were on this Ori Borealis site and they're like, oh, we've been out for two nights. Yeah, no <laughs> lot. It's too no loudy. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, really? Well, Mom didn't see him, but we did go to Leeds and Turner, which we did see him. Oh. And then we came back. Melanie and I, Diana didn't go. Uh, that was the night before. Melanie and I came back at like 11 something, and it's like, no. There's blue. No, no, there was blue. Really? We went everywhere and Leeds and everything, and we come back and they up vomit at him. <laughs> we looked out and we could see a little bit of blue and green. Oh, so yeah, we had yeah. them right in our own town yeah. late, late. Yeah. But yeah. Anyways, that was up by your uh, us up by your way, which is Ridge Road has a yes. beautiful place to go see the stars and the yeah. yeah. But anyways, nice to meet you. <laughs> but yes, um and going Steve back Eldridge. To and then, uh, not that yes. you know, Kayla. and yes. not that yes. you know him. Yes. <laughs> and of course, Larry. Yeah, and Dr. Larry. Yes, yes, right. Larry yeah. is very yeah. dear to my heart. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, there. Well, thank you, Donna. That'll but yes, uh, on that, I would very much, um, there's some, and, in, 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 you know, items that people may be very much interested mm -hmm. in. Right. You know, that's, I think, a key, too. Mm -hmm. Um, places of restaurants and things like that, I think, are key yeah. items that yeah. we could probably act on. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be wonderful. So, and Perfect. Steve, anything that I mean, that I can maybe hope. Yeah. I know Chris was saying you have done a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, if you Not successfully <laughs> well, last year in, and half, in but, your past, yeah, you know, past, you have a yeah. lot of experience on that. I was, you know, I'm not a grant writer, but no. working for the state What's 39 years, uh, 441, 9236, and still working for the state. Um, I don't mind um, what we can try to do or any I mean, sit down and talk like to you what I've done and what yeah. I'm looking at it. Yeah. I'm kind of going back to uh, the beginning with Alphon and mm -hmm. Libra. And that Chris I, and I were talking about that. Um, everybody that requested fund from and turned yeah. me down. So Key Bank just, we had sent on that request from Key Bank and they turned us down. Kind of bad. Kennebec, that's right. Yeah, Kennebec gave us 25000 in the beginning, but then they turned us down this time when we asked uh, They have one. And Andrew Scoggin hasn't gotten back to me yet. No, it's so strange. With it Andrew is. Scoggin. Yeah, and uh, I haven't called John Simcoe, who lives here, but I plan to. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about the historic people that were here. Yeah, yeah. Um, we met with uh, Michael Bain, who is from the Maine Historic Preservation, uh, Dawn and uh, Kristen and I. Um, I couldn't get a feel for him, so I'm not sure what. He took a lot of pictures, asked her a lot of questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did get it back. I sent him off his mm -hmm. drawings, and he said he'd be back to me soon. Which is, I was yeah. excited as I could get, I guess. But <laughs> So as soon as he gets that in, in November, when hopefully the bill passes, we'll have a chance to go after some money. Sure. Well, it's so hard to read him because, you know, on one hand, they're saying, well, they're not as sticklers as they used to be. But then he's asking me about why we didn't do multi-paned windows. And I'm like, well, my God, if we had done, you know, because then I went back and looked and the windows were multiple panes. Right. 
but right. they were like they were narrow. 24 yeah. over 16 or some crazy yeah. amount in right. you know if you look at yeah. i think the one on the right you can see that the windows were mm -hmm. And those windows on the front of the building are different than the ones that were there when the entryway was on the front of the building. Um, they were multiple panes. And um, that would have been crazy expensive, wouldn't it have been, Andrew, to do multiple pane windows? So uh, it depends, depends on how it's made. If you, you can do simulated lights, which is yeah. basically they just put strips between it's the... In there between the two panes but right. yeah. to do it like historically accurate where probably the, none of the glass was probably more than i don't know a foot by a foot yeah. or something yeah would have been a bit yes and what do they ask for with the store and preservation i know you guys have done that before but don't they do they ask for it to be accurate as opposed to the the just the little strips and plastic in between the the panes it, it depends. Um, if a building is on like a national registry, then pretty much nothing is acceptable except for <laughs> restoration back to what it used to be. However, if there's like a local preservation board, that's a lot more lenient. Um, you know, as long as you're getting an aesthetic that really comes off as, uh, as authentic, then it, it's, it's a little bit easier. Yeah, I think yeah. he said the exterior. This is trying to make... Well, he mentioned that, I guess... Larry, maybe you can remember this, uh, that they had applied for a historic register before mm -hmm. and the state review said, fine, they agreed that it should go, but they had to send it to Washington. And the people in Washington turned it down because the front part, Harry, uh, the Harry Cochran's Potter design design. wasn't 50 years old yet. Yeah, in the 80s, they so, applied in the 80s and that was built in like 49. Yeah. yeah. And so it wasn't 50 years old yet. And then the next time they applied, the wings weren't 50 years old yet in the 90s. And then yeah, they were put, yeah, they were put on in the yeah, 50, yeah, 50, 50, 60. Yeah. Yeah. And then all that's gone now. And of course, the facade is over 50 years old. Yeah. Now, so. so that was kind of odd to hear. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I have a question. So could we from what's remaining, my understanding, can we now? That's what we're doing that's now. What we're trying. That's awesome. what we're trying. And we're not trying to get on the national register. Yeah. We're trying to just get the state yeah. to recognize it because that bill doesn't require us yeah, it's historic. to be nice. on the national register. But okay. Maybe it could be. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see what he has to say. Yeah. Nice. They also had a, it's on their website. That would protect it as well. Yes. Yeah. We, there's a grant for 10000 yeah. that they have, mm. and, I, and I sent off, I have to send off a letter of interest, yes. so I did that this week. Great. I should hear back. I don't, I don't know if it goes to Michael. Like, <laughs> not, <laughs> well, he was, walk, he was way at the back down here taking pictures when you guys left, and I walked back to the car with him, and I said, you know, whatever you can do to help us, we will be so appreciative of because we've run into every roadblock there is with this yeah, and totally and wins. um i'm but again i think he's like every state employee they have this <laughs> facade and they won't ever give you an answer anybody in in no. government they won't ever give you an answer that you can assume yes or no from. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's all... they don't want to make promises yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. they're all middle of the road we're going to ride yeah. the fence until we fall off in right, one exactly. direction or the other so <laughs> right. yeah well, I think to ask is my understanding is if the building has had significant social impact on the community which the academy has that that yes. also that eligible for status. So you need to say, I mean, look at the people that graduate from Mama's Academy. Yes. Right. Uh, exactly. Significant for the town of Mama's, but significant for the state of Maine and even the country. Right. Yeah. So that in itself could be a factor that would tilt in our favor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I agree. Well, that was included in our original application to them. I gave you whole list of people and pictures of them. Yeah. And 
Oh, uh, that's good. Yeah, it didn't seem to push it over the edge at all. So uh, I'll just continue to do that. Yeah. So. Steve, another yeah. I, well, if I can ask one more question. Um, I saw where the state had an $8 million um, grant for climate change impact on communities. And I was wondering, with what happened in Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, if we could push for a warming center for the town of Mama. Um, if that warming center, warming center. Because we do get hurricanes up here in Maine. So, and mm -hmm. significant snowstorm, so it could be an ice storm. You know, ice is really hard. To God, to go don't say those words. Oh, I don't want to have that happen again. <laughs> but anyways, if we could get money for a warming station there from a, like that $8 million grant, that would be wonderful. You know, get the bathroom, the shower, and the- yeah. um, Those have been in some of my applications. Yeah, because there will be, you know, we did ask for that shower yeah. and that. Um, area and then the catering kitchen will be set up to just you know serve meals out of not actually cook there but you know we'd be able to serve a meal out of there with you know crock pots so, and yeah exactly. shaping dishes yeah. and all that fun stuff so you could actually prepare a meal there yeah. in a crock pot yes yeah. not immediate obviously yeah but. exactly so you know then that's that be part of that. So I don't know, I'll just wait to see what he says. <laughs> yeah, I would just uh, throw in a little bit of caution on on which route you would take if you were to try and do both. Some historic registry type stuff will will severely limit uh, or restrict what you can do with a right. building. So say you got on the national registry like you said you're not trying to but for instance if that were true uh potentially they wouldn't allow you to put a shower in because you know there wasn't one existing in the building in the 1800s or something like that and then yeah, yeah. and then now you can't that. do a warming shelter or emergency shelter type thing so if if you go for anything like historic just read the fine print and maybe yeah. get a, you know an understanding from whoever assesses the building on like what you'd be able to do in the future if you needed to. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Ask yeah. the questions. Yeah. 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 Put in a sister. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I have. That's all I, I have. just keep looking and mm -hmm. applying. And... The only other thing that I wanted to bring up, and obviously this isn't immediate because we need to finish the building first, but I wanted to plant the seed about eventually having a friends of, you know, having a friends of mm -hmm. 1856 Monmouth Academy, like right. Humston does to do things that they need to get done. Right. And so eventually, I mean, I know that there's paperwork and you have to draw up your uh, bylaws and get a 5013C, but I mean, eventually once we trying to think of <laughs> when we are done, when we fall into the next category. Because right. I'm sure that the way that they're used at you know, the library in Humpston is that they help with events and things like that. And they help raise funds mm -hmm. to do things outside of the scope of right. what the town might be able to afford. So I just wanted to plant that seed for the future when we, when we do finish this building. Because we are. <laughs> you have to also consider a lot of the grants I've looked at want to know once it's completed mm -hmm. what the budget is going to be to operate. Yeah. And I, I can't predict that. We can't because we're so far away from having yeah. it. I mean, we, it will emphasize if we could come up with some concrete ideas yeah. of what the use is going to be. Yeah. So oh, yeah. That's all. Well, we know that we are going to vote there because they're dying to have a bigger yeah, space. Yeah, they're pretty upset that they're going to have to use this yeah, for November. November. Oh, and we do know there. that for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They won't let them at the school because they'd have to close school for the day because of all the And they didn't want to, they didn't want to go in. to remote yeah. or something. So that's going to be here. Really? Yeah. yeah. So, so they had to submit a design because... Um, with the state, you have to have so many booths per so many voting yeah. um, people who are registered to vote. So they had to submit the design, like, is this going to meet, you know, the state requirements? Mm -hmm. 
Up here. Yeah. Mm. It's going to be a dark parking lot. Exactly. It's gonna be a... And it's going to be cold standing in line. I Hopefully think they're going to come in. Come in through yes, that door. At the yeah. end. They're, they're going to queue in yeah. that door. Yeah. Oh, in the one on the yes. side. to coming in the center. Yeah. So it'll give them more a little room more room to have and inside. have probably a queue in the main entryway there. But the you know as they said the biggest bottleneck is feeding them into the counters and um, that's what takes so long is feeding the ballot into the machine. So it's a matter of limiting people coming in. So now we, we have, have we have treading that day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely we have, treading. Yeah, we've already done in Lewis and already um, had requests for thirty five hundred yeah. absentee ballots, oh, yeah. and they're pouring in at the Oh my gosh, wants, nobody wants to come to vote. Well, people, um, because of twenty twenty, people, yeah. you know, are hesitant because of it. and because of you know, the COVID and everything, but also people are afraid um, because of all the things that are are happening, yeah. shootings and. Bombs, threats, and oh, yeah. stuff. So, yeah. So, but yeah, they'll be here. Yeah. <clears throat> and I mean, the other thing too is it will be for meetings, you know, like Lori was up here. They had multiple people from other towns doing a trio training here mm -hmm. today. They oh, had gosh. like 15 people from other towns doing trio training in here today. And they were asked if there was, you know, availability and they use this room. But think of it over there and how many more people, you know, could participate. Trio is a state yeah. software, yeah. Well, municipal software that yeah. gets used probably in 85% uh, of the communities throughout this whole state of Maine. Yeah. They're out of, they were out of Bangor or Herman, but they, yeah. they got purchased by a company out of North Carolina. But they're, yeah. they're ex not expensive, I mean, compared to some, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, and they're easy to yeah. use you know, once you yeah. get them set up. And so, you know, things like that, I mean, beyond, you know, state or town training, but, you right. know, businesses, businesses uh, using it. Every place looking for a place to have a meeting or yeah. some sort of like exactly. small right. event yeah. or a gathering. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, training. And then hopefully more rec programs. And yeah. as, I think that's know. the thing, because that's the thing that I've heard the most of is, well, it's not going to be used for anything. No one's going to be allowed to use it. And I'm going, oh, my God. Is that where, is this, where is that coming from? I don't from? understand that. I don't understand. We've never ever said ever, that out ever, loud. Ever, ever said we that. want it. You I know. Want it. We want you. So. <laughs> All like, the oh, kids no. that spent time in there, we want more people in there again to enjoy it. So I don't understand where that whole idea comes from. But well, you know, we have our ideas where yeah. it comes from. Yeah, <laughs> of course we do. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but anyway, just to plant that seed and then, you know, okay. hopefully we'll get there and we'll um... Okay, the next item, we'll continue with just one other item here, um, the budget. We have a copy here. What we have is you know, remaining phase one budget is 268813 dollars. Of that, of course, it was the 88,294. So um, we still have a few dollars to spend. Um, what I'd have to actually have to look to see what what is wish Steve could participate uh, from uh, next to no day because mm -hmm. I'd really like to know what their focus on is we're into October now. If we've got a couple hundred thousand dollars here still to work with, what does the budget consist of? The balance of the work to be done? What, you know? Maybe we'll have to contact Steve and have yeah. a clarification of what. What are the things coming up that need to be done? Did he provide us with a list of things? That... Yeah, but that was a couple, that was what, a month and a half yeah. ago? Yeah. So how are we, how are we, you know, how are we doing managing that list? And, you know, are we still on, on yeah. budget? I think they're getting the fairly theory. close with all the interior framing, the walls and that kind of stuff are coming along. Yeah. So they would, okay, so there'd be the insulation. Um, and he did say he was going to put, um, oh, yeah, Mm-hmm. On under the floor mm -hmm. and on on up in the attic, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Okay. Um, 
I'll send a note out to Steve just to say, okay, what's, you know, what's left on the to-do yeah. list. We just got to tell him because we are coming down to the end. We just can't afford to run over because there's no, there's, there's no, no water. Well, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Let's say I have another magic weekend. Right. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. Okay. So, um, at this point, as I say, we have we have um, two hundred sixty-eight thousand left to go, and left in the budget. So we'll get an update for next meeting on what what is left for them to uh, to complete to finish phase one. Oops. So this uh, forty-nine eight thirty-six is that is this. That is probably work completed in the month of August. That's work completed in the month of August, yes. So we also have, have work completed in the month of September exactly. that will be coming. Which will be coming. The billing is, is 30 exactly. days behind exactly. actuality. Right. So right. we just got to make sure we don't end up going over it. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't want to have to take bottles back. No, I don't no. either. Take a lot of bottles. I'm telling you. <laughs> We look pretty bad on the bottom of the line. That's correct. We also have all design. Design. Okay, we have two invoices. With that, um, next no day is the first one, a general contractor or construction manager. Um, what they have here is uh, an invoice for August, and the total for this month is $49,836.84. It consists of about $16,000 of labor costs, materials, 22,000 materials, uh, looks like Camco. It's a primary for 17,000, but 22,000 for materials. Um, project management, so Steve is twenty two fifty two, and then equipment rental have you know the lifts and whatnot and sixty one hundred, so that total is forty nine eight thirty six. Hmm. Probably can expect something similar the next month. I would imagine too. Any questions on that invoice? Yeah, they have general conditions. So the pages, okay. So it's probably the doors, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Doors. Yeah. Doors and frames. Mm -hmm. Finished carpentry. An exterior trim. It's been picking away at the stuff for sure. That was the primary expense with the doors. Those doors look really nice. Mm, they do. They look really sharp. We have a motion to accept uh, and recommend this for payment. Thank you. Thank you. And we have. I will second that. Second. Thanks, Steve. All in favor? I vote yes. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. <laughs> so we have um, moved um, this to go to the um, select board for $49,836.84 to be recommended to you. Don, if you email that to me, I'll sign it tomorrow, scan it, and send it back to you. Awesome. Okay, yeah. And to Andrew. Okay. And then Paul Design, uh, which is an invoice for $650 uh, for the month of September. We have professional designer, principal, professional designer, $230, and the principal is $420 for $650. Questions on that invoice? Make a motion to accept it. Thank you. No second. Second. All in favor? Very much. How about you, Larry? I would yes. I vote yes. 
<laughs> I'm okay. We, we will send uh, the invoice for six hundred and fifty dollars to down to be put in the warrant. Thanks. That's all I have. So the next um, next item would be select board. Anything for the select board that we know of? I don't. I don't have anything. It's been. Crickets. Okay. We like that. Crickets we? are nice. We yeah. like crickets. Um, okay, so the next, the date for the next uh, meeting. Next meeting? Gosh, November. How oh, oh, stop. I'm telling you, I'm, well, oh, but the election will be over. I'll be in a far better mood. <laughs> <laughs> so we won't be able to set up in here on the 4th because they'll be setting up. Right. And then when the is the next, um, town meet, the select board meeting? Let me take a few yeah. of that. Um, the next one after that will be um, the 11th. The 11th, which is the holiday. Of course, the holiday. Okay. Sorry, but. Sorry. But that's, I mean, I, I'll, I should be around, but yeah. I mean, that's up to you guys. If you're gone, who knows? Doesn't matter to me. So that's okay with the 11th. Okay. November, Monday, November, Monday, November 11th, which would be Veterans Day. I'll be back. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be back. Yeah. Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. Veterans Day. Yeah. It'd be okay. Yeah. Would you be okay with Monday the 11th, Larry and Andrew? I'll be okay with that. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I believe so. Um, so eleven. Same bat time. Same bat channel here. So eleven. Yeah. 11. Looks good for me. Thank you. Unless you have your appendix out. <laughs> You'll be back by then. Oh yeah. It'll be back in the saddle. Be back in the saddle. No, oh, I had uh, I had something done. Well, I had like a minor appendicitis when I was in seventh grade, and uh, but the doctors wouldn't take it out. So my mom took me to an acupuncturist, and really, they're, they're apparently whatever she did was enough to relieve the pressure, or it wasn't bothered anymore. But it went right away. So yeah, okay, well, that's if cool. If it if it persists, maybe we'll look into that again. <laughs> <laughs> the older you get, the harder you fall. Oh, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, we have no public. So well, we do have. Well, we have, have public. public. Do you have any public? Public. 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 I'm, I'm no. Okay. <laughs> All right. We have a motion to adjourn. And second. Thank you very much. All in favor? Thank you, everybody.